The newest faces for the Houston Rockets aren't just on the court this season. Ryan Holland is the newest member of the Rockets broadcast team. What's up, Ryan? What's going on, brother? Thanks for having me. We've got a lot to dive into in today's show. Really excited to get to know Ryan a little bit better. Talk about your Houston Rockets and all of that coming up right here at Locked On Rockets. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. With the second pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Jalen Green. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep getting better every day. I'm going to keep perfecting my craft. And every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another episode of Locked on Rockets, the best and only daily podcast covering your Houston Rockets. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and partner at Apollo Media. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin, the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, as well as at Apollo HO. You now joining us today, we have a very, very special guest, the newest member of your Houston Rockets broadcast team, 10-year NBA veteran Ryan Hollins. What's up, Ryan? So excited to have you on the show. Hey, man, thanks for having me, Jackson. I'm a big fan of this show, brother. Love the work that you've been doing. I, I, I've been paying attention, man. I've been paying attention. <laughs> well, hey, I'll tell you what. It's going to be great to see you know, to have you along this journey with us to experience the Houston Rockets up close and personal. And I can't wait to pick your brain. We got so many things lined up that I want to ask you about, find out about from you. But really, I want to you know, get to know you a little bit more, right? Because let, let's face it, you stepping into some big shoes with uh, filling the role that, you know, Matt Bullard has occupied for the better part of the last, you know, almost decade or so in the in the Rockets broadcast team. And, um, I, you know, I want fans to get to know you a little bit better. So I want to start, we're going to, we're going to dial it way back. I want to start from the beginning. How old were you when you started playing basketball? Like, like, how, you know, when, when did the journey really start for you? I, I was in the uh, the second grade, man. And, um, you know, it's funny, my dad always knew uh, I'd be seven feet tall. It was in his mind. It's, it's weird. He, my dad was my dad's only six, four and my mom's five eleven. There's no other like seven footers in the family. My dad was like, you're going to be seven feet. I'm like, OK. And I believed it. And I remember one day I, I was coming home from school and I was getting a ride home from school. And like my neighbor picked me up, Miss Evans. Miss Evans was older. You know, we used to call it, you know, Grandma Evans. And I, I just thought it was weird that she was picking me up. Lo and behold, I get home, my dad had put a hoop in the backyard. And that was really kind of like the beginning of the end. And, you know, Jackson, I, I know you heard this before, but I want everyone to know this. It was crazy. The Houston Rockets, you know, helped me fall in love with the game of basketball. And that's when I first started watching basketball. And it was like, oh, they're tall like me. Like, I'm going to be tall, you know, like Hakeem, like Shaq. Like, that was my thing. So, you know, it's just kind of amazing like I said, honestly, to come full circle, I played for almost the entire NBA, you know, nine different organizations in 10 years, but I never got the call for the Rockets, you know, like, so just for me, it, this is just one of the coolest opportunities that I can have. And I know a lot of people would like to go, well, you know, former player, former player, see me as a the guy on the couch watching the game like you as a fan that is in love with the game just the same. And honestly, living a dream the second time around to have this opportunity. Man, I well, first off, I can already tell you. I mean, the, just the passion is pouring out of you, Ryan, and I'm, I, you know, it, all it's doing is making me even more excited for this Rocket season to be able to have you be the guy in the booth, kind of guiding us through alongside, you know, Rockets fan favorite Craig Ackerman. I mean, you two are going to be a dynamic duo. I, I love the idea of you guys in the booth together, and can't wait to see how you guys gel and, and create chemistry with one another. But if you could just kind of. It, first off, also, I got to give a shout out to your dad for for manifesting the whole seven footer thing. I mean, he spoke it into existence. Talk about oh, uh, LeVar Ball a little bit, just making it happen. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, do, do you was it was it that moment? Was it when the hoop went up or was there a moment a little bit later on when you look back and you can be like, you know what? I, I think I can do this for a career. Man, um I've always had this weird, like, stupid belief in myself, even, like, when hey, me too. I didn't. And, and, like, you can imagine, like, honestly, through my lifetime, like, I, I don't know if it's my dad just putting confidence in me or just this odd, like, 
sense of confidence that didn't need to be there, but I've overachieved my whole life. And like, I, like, I kind of am blown away at this opportunity. Cause I'm like, guys like me aren't supposed to have these opportunities. Like normally this is for the, like the, you know, the hall of famer, like the big time guy. And I'm like, like me, like when I got the call, even just to have an interview for this job, I was like, Oh my God, like this is a, a privilege, but to play 10 years in the NBA, like, my dad was like a track and football guy. Like I did not have this big prestigious. I wasn't this all American player. Like I was, I was cut in the ninth grade. Like, you know, I'm always been the hardworking guy. So honestly it, it's a, dr a dream, but just for me to make it to the NBA and then let alone still be a part of this amazing league. Like I, I like, I, I don't, I don't know how it's God's grace. <laughs> I can't I give you like, nah, man. I did this, this, and this, and this. Like, I, I don't have, I don't have that for you. Know a lot of hard work. Don't get me wrong, and dedication. But there's a lot of people like, like Jackson. Like, you'd love to be like the starting point guard for the Rockets or <laughs> Swingman. But like, God didn't make you six seven. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, I'm thankful. Like, the cards have aligned themselves, and you know, I, 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 I try to. You know, if anything, I'll say and the fans need to notice from me, like I work my tail off. I'm going to work my butt off and I, I don't take any of that for granted, you know. And hey, sometimes all you got to do is thank the man upstairs. Right. So, I mean, you know, you yes. give him a shout out. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, you talked about, you know, falling in love with the, that Rockets team from the mid 90s, the the Clutch City era Rockets, Hakeem. What? You got to walk me through that because you're from California, right? So how did that happen? Did, was it just, was it Hakeem specifically? Because, I mean, you, you would have been, what, 15 around the time the Lakers started to three-peat, right? So Yeah. You know, it's weird. Like, obviously, I was a Laker fan because they were there. Mm -hmm. But your first memories, you gravitate towards winning. <laughs> boom. That's the team winning at the time. Winning. Boom. So Mario Ellie, Sam Cassell, Rob Horry, Vernon Maxwell, like, those guys are in great. Whenever I see them, it's a slight level of starstruck. And I was coached by Mario Elliott in Dallas. And every time, you know, Rio would talk, I'd be saying like, yo, this is Mario Elliott right here. <laughs> like, it was always like a thing. And, you know, UCLA, the 95 championship, it was back to back those memories. So Toby Bailey, Ed O'Bannon, George Zedek, those guys are like mega stars to me. So like Hakeem, like all those guys, bull, like, like, I was called, I was working for the Clippers broadcast and Bull comes through the the like media room to eat. And like I'm like starstruck sitting like, yo, that's mad, but like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you remember those, like I'm like I, like that. So your first memories, like you can't deny them. Like there's no way around them. So I, I think obviously the three-point shooting, you know, Hakeem on, on the block, you know, Sam Cassell doing it, you know, do, doing his thing. Dream like, shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't the dream shake. That was the big shot. Big shot. You know. Oh, okay, you know? okay. My bad. I was giving oh, you. The, I thought you were giving me a little no, bit of the dream shake. Okay. No, the dream I thought the shoulder shimmy. You know. <laughs> and then you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, everybody's you know, dad or uncle takes him to the back backyard. Well, you, you know, you gotta play like a king. You know, learn learn to shake. You know, it's like like dude, that's soccer footwork and and timing and gifts that you can't just recreate. <laughs> but you know, I think just when as a kid, when you see winning, when you see winning. It's it's a thing. It's it's a big thing. Like you know, I always think back, like when I played for the for the Lob City Clippers. We didn't win a championship, but guess what? We beat the snot out the Lakers for a small point portion of time. But there is a kid, maybe seven or eight years old, that just remembers, oh, the Clippers are winning, and he's a Clipper fan for life. Like you know what I'm saying? Like or like you never forget those moments. So I think that's just really it was winning. It was Hakeem. He was tall. He was like me. Like it, it, it was the three point shooting, just the energy of those guys, you know, big shot Rob, like there, there was so much to it that I think just really gravitated me, you know, to and just playing hard, you, you know, like, like that gravitated me towards the game, you know, and, and definitely towards, towards Houston. I, and I gotta admit, I was always a little salty that I never got that call in free agency, you know, for the Rockets, but I've always had like, just a love for them. It, it's like an odd, like I said, odd respect that's always been there. And now it's full circle. And now you're a part of the organization. You're, you're calling games for Rockets and it's going to be an exciting next step in the journey. And, and coming up, I want to find out, you know, how you got that journey started in broadcasting, as well as we're going to dive into some of your thoughts on the Rockets rookies and the outlook for this team moving forward. But first, got to drop in a quick message from our friends over at Sweatblock. 
Look, sweating sucks. It's it's gross. I mean, unless you're working out a you know gym and getting a good workout sweat in, sure, that's one thing. But if you're just going about your day, running errands, hanging out with friends, you know, maybe you're going on a date, whatever, you know, you don't want to feel sweaty. You don't want to feel it under your arms, through your shirt, through your clothes. No, it's it's uncomfortable. Sweat block can help you out with that if it's something that you struggle with. It's doctor created, doctor recommended, works for up to seven days per application. They have a dry shirt guarantee. So look, if, if sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back 100 percent guaranteed. No questions asked. Sweat block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You basically just put it on right before you go to bed at night, wake up the next day, go about your morning shower, get dressed, put your makeup on, you know, do whatever you got to do to get ready for the day. No worries. And then you go throughout your whole day without having to worry about sweat at all. Guaranteed. I, I know it sounds too good to be true, right? But if you or someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out sweat block, get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on also available at Amazon and CVS. So again, that's 20% off with promo code locked on at sweatblock.com. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball, joined by the Ryan Hollins, newest member of your Houston Rockets broadcast team. Now, Ryan, you already you mentioned your time with the Clippers and you mentioned, you know, being on the Clippers broadcast team, being in that media room, being starstruck by Matt Bullard. You know, when was the moment that you decided that you wanted to dabble and get into into broadcasting specifically? Do you remember making that decision and thinking, you know what, this is something I could see myself doing? Man, that is a great question. So um, the NBA and the MBPA, they do a great job of offering courses to help players figure out what they want to do after basketball. I was fortunate to play 10 years, dude. So partway through that journey, you know, you become mature enough to where you can think about two things because, you know, early in your career, you want to be tunnel vision on basketball nonetheless. You know, and I love the way that the kids open up and think about other things now at such an earlier age and understand their brand and their likeness. So I took about every course under the sun, the, you know, the coaching clinic, you know, real estate courses uh, and went to Google for some courses, Facebook, all that. But when I went to the Sportscaster U program, it was just different. I got the bug. I felt this sense of competition. I saw something that I wasn't good at that I wanted to work at. I have no fear of talking, you know, and just the broadcasting really grab my attention and from there during my playing career a lot of people don't know this they think i just like roll out of bed like like role players don't get opportunities like that unless they work their tail off i would do radio in the summertime with espn radio i popped on sports nation a few times um when i was playing for the kings i would go to their espn affiliate and do radio there and do sit down and do three four hours of radio and it's funny you know, I didn't quite really know what broadcasting was. I guess I was naive to it. And I just thought I should just pop on TV or pop on radio or whatever if I wanted. And a lot of my first opportunities came in radio. And I said radio about four or five times right there is because for one, I didn't want to do radio. I thought I was just big time enough to go on TV. And that wasn't the case. And what made me fall in love with radio is the competitive spirit and nature of myself behind it. And that radio is incredibly hard to do to be Jackson Gatling in podcast form by himself to keep you guys interested and sit there and talk is very, very hard to do. There is a skill and knack behind it. So as me as a player at the time, I'm going, I'm not good at this. Let me learn to be good. And I started watching other people. And at the station at the time, Marcellus Wiley and Max Kellerman were working, you know, at, at the station at ESPN. And I would sit in on their shows. I would host shows with them, uh, Michael Thompson, you know, John Ireland, all those guys. And I would just pick their brains and learns and I would just bug them like, hey man, how do you do this? Did I do good here? What I need to do here, here, here. And I just continued to grow a radio. And to me, my growth in my career, it's like, to me, I see radio like going to practice. TV right. is like the game. When you get in on TV, it's, it's, a, it's a breeze. Now radio, when you can't see me, you can't hear me or I'm by myself like Jackson Gatlin doing a show. You have to work your butt off and you have to be very uh, intriguing and informative and you have to have highs and lows in your pitch. I really, really worked on the craft and want to learn the craft because Jackson, I never went to school for this. This was not something I was taught how to do. And as far as speaking, it was incredibly tough because as a player, we kind of become these hermits and we have these, you know, these, these catchphrases, both teams play hard. I'd like to credit my teammates for this great win. And we're going to get back to practice tomorrow and do well. And I've been ingrained to do that because you don't want to have any type of, you know, material outside of that. So I had to learn how to speak. I had to learn how to be interesting. 
And I would say this to any aspiring broadcasters that helped me really, really get better at what I do is I would throw the Ryan Holland skills camp. And you say, well, what does a basketball camp have to do with learning how to speak? If you can go out and I challenge any of you who'd like to learn the craft and speak to uh, five, six and seven year olds and keep them engaged because their attention span is about five seconds each, you can be really good at what you do at this. So if you can do that, which means if you just go talking to them regularly, they're gonna, they're gonna span out. So if you can actually grab their attention and hold on to it, you can learn the craft. So um, my philanthropy work in the neighborhood and at my, my high school and with the kids helped me on this side because I had to speak and you were speaking in front of 100 kids or 200 kids or whatever, you gotta learn how to do that. You gotta be, you know, you gotta be good at it or else the kids are, you know, the kids, are, that's that truth serum right there. Like, ah, we're yawning right in front of your face. We don't wanna hear you, you know, like, like they're, gonna let, they're gonna let you know how good or bad you are. They got that. They've got that goldfish attention span, man. If you don't grab them, it's it's game over. I lo- I love that, Ryan. That's that's amazing to know, and it really sounds like again, you know, you're somebody who is who is you know takes exactly what you want to do, and you work hard at, it and you you you're passionate about it. And again, it it bleeds through in the way that you talk about it. So you know, there's you know no doubt in my mind that you're going to find success in this new role, this new endeavor with the Rockets. And again, I can't look for I can't I can't wait to see it you know progress and and you know, move forward. But with that, I, I do want to talk about the Rockets a little bit. And, you know, first place we got to start, you know, where else can we start other than, than Jalen Green? You know, I want to know, you know, what have you liked out of him so far in these, th- these first few preseason games? And, you know, what do you see as kind of the biggest adjustment for not only him, but for the rest of the rookies as they get started, you know, here in their first NBA campaign? Jalen's over exceeded my expectations, to be honest. Um, I actually covered the G League last year and called some games. I didn't get a chance to do his Ignite game, um, but he's so thin and wiry. And I just thought he was just a scorer, you know, just just a just a gunner, just a shooter. But he's got an incredible feel for how to play the game of basketball. He'll make the correct pass, you know, to Wood or Tice on the roll every single time down the floor. Um, he tries to get in the right spots defensively. Uh, I think obviously we all know this, you know, to be a, a, a former 10 year NBA vet, you know, he's got to be stronger, uh, which he will. He's incredibly young. But what I am keep hearing from all the scouts and some of the people who work with him behind the scenes, and these are high praise, man, but I, I, I don't like to throw his name around lightly. But they say he's got like a Kobe like, like, like just obsession about being good at the game of basketball and let's not jump off a bridge i don't want to call him kobe bryant right now that's very high praise but like this kid loves the game he's going to be working at the game and of the guys that i've played with he's extremely intriguing because sometimes you see guys that can dribble well and dunk and that's what they do they dribble and they dunk but they can't shoot to save their lives sometimes you have guys that you know, like a former team like Jason Richardson. Jason Richardson could dunk on you with the best of them, and he shot threes. And, you know, in the mid-range, he kind of just figured it out and worked his tail off and got better. Jalen can kind of do all three. He has a, a really good handle. He can shoot, and you know he can fly. So it's just him and the strength factor coming along and the experience and I think, you know, we've got our first taste and I liked it. And I know a lot of the fans were upset at what happened in Toronto in that, oh, Jalen, we know who you are. The opposing team is in the, in, in the scouting room in, on the board. And they're going, boom, Jalen Green. This is what he does. They're showing his highlight tapes and him dunking and shooting threes and all that. And the other team is like, oh, no, nah, I'm going to show him, you know, what time it is. And I think that's what he saw the last game. So good job he's going to now have to take his game to the next level and continue to work but jackson he's 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 extremely intriguing for his ability to shoot off the bounce and as springy as he is and normally jackson i want you to remember this guys that are springy when they shoot the three they kind of struggle because they jump so high they fade out of their shot or they can get away with you know shooting an off balance shot and it's still kind of going in But Jalen will be dribbling hard left, pull up to the right, and be squared up perfectly to the rim. So um, as a shooter, that's he's checking off a lot of the boxes, man. And that's what has myself, the city, and especially the Rockets organization, you know, uh, up in arms about him. And a lot of people argued, 
he should have been the number one pick in the draft. I'm, I'm glad we got him. Right. I mean, hey, the fact that he fell at number two, no complaints for me. Right. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to make Detroit regret not taking him number one overall a little bit further down the line. But coming up, want to get some other thoughts on the rest of the Rockets players moving through this early preseason and some final thoughts from Ryan Hollins here in just a moment after a quick message from our friends over at betonline.ag. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron because football, both college and professional, are going strong. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. They've also got you covered for NBA, MLB, UFC, MMA, NHL, you name it. They've got you covered for all the odds, props, and contests over at BetOnline.ag. So head over to their website and use promo code LOCKEDON, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for a 50% welcome bonus on your very first deposit. Again, that's promo code LOCKEDON for a 50% welcome bonus on your very first deposit from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Bet online where the game starts. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. If you haven't done so yet, please make Locked on Rockets your first listen of the day. We sincerely appreciate it. I've got a second listen teed up for you a little bit later on, continuing our conversation with Ryan Hollins. Now, Ryan, talked about Jalen Green, you know, just how special he is and, and, you know, hopefully the the growth that we're going to see out of him as he, you know, stays in Houston Rocket, hopefully for years to come and potentially some championships down the line. We're going to manifest those the same way your dad manifested your seven foot uh, height. But um, <laughs> who who else in your eyes, you know, has, has really stood out so far in, in Rockets preseason to you? The guys that are, you know, jumping off the page, their abilities, you know, what what have you seen so far? I mean, go, going down the list, who, who do we who do we start with? I, I, I mean, guys, you, you, you know how I feel about Christian Wood. If you guys had noticed my, my excitement with him, um, but I think, you know, w- one of the other surprises, um, the still of the draft and Jackson, you can take the words out of my mouth when I, when I say this, uh, Alpine Sangoon, um, he is a grown adult man and we're going to have to check his birth certificate because he knows how to play, man. Like he, like, he knows how to pass. He knows how to position his body. Uh, you know, he's going to be knocking down threes within the next two or three years. He just probably is like, well, I never had to really shoot threes, but I've seen him shoot them in warmups. He could make them. Um, it's not an ugly, broken shot. I love that he's got some dog in him. He's physical. You know, Toronto was throwing our guys around, and Alpreen got in the game and was like, ooh, I'm used to this. <laughs> I'm used Elbows to the way <laughs> uh, we play. Um, and he just knows how to play, and he'll improve defensively. He's never going to be some big-time weak side shot blocker. He's not going to be Dwight Howard, but he's going to be an intelligent player. And, you know, when you're playing Scoot at one, you need a little more help playmaking. You know, Scoot and Jalen are going to be more comfortable playing off of the basketball and and scoring. Uh, Al P is going to be like, shoot, give me the basketball and and we'll cut and move. And who knows, he may be, Al P may be the starting point guard for us, you know, the same way that – you know, Jokic is used in Denver. You know, I don't think that if you're seeing the way that coach Silas coaches and just says, I'm going to do what's right for our guys. um, He, he, he's going to, he may end up doing that. You never know. And I want you to throw that out there, Jackson, just we'll we'll talk about it later on in another pod. And um, last but not least, I mean, I mean, I can listen, I can go down the line with the guys. I love our team. Josh Christopher, man, Josh Christopher has taken advantage of opportunity. And there's just something about Josh Christopher that when the lights turn on, that boy is ready to play. He's excited. He's just running around. And Jackson, like, am I wrong? Like, you can just kind of see these moments like, dang, like, if he puts this, this, and this together, oh, I see it. I see it. And there are going to be those flashes. And, you know, who knows how the season will turn out? You know, who who knows? Best best case, you know, we shoot for the stars. We're, we're in the eighth spot. We, we're definitely in the playoff. Who knows? We may have a situation where we're playing a game. Who knows? We may be looking at lottery balls. But I know that our guys are going to improve. But I want to see Josh get minutes and how he grows because he just got this excitement around him. And he's got a buzz. It's funny. They were on the on the break the other day. It was Dante Exum and Josh. And Exum just threw the ball in the air. And Josh kind of, you know, jumped too fi- fast because he was excited. But Exum knew, oh, I know what Josh is bringing to the table. And he's getting a reputation and rapport with his teammates and the fans of his excitement, what he wants to do in transition. And obviously we see the three ball developing with Josh. So he's exciting. He's got a frame and he's just, he's just like a basketball player. 
He, I really, really, he's got like, like an NBA body on him already. Like he, he's, you know, already, he's bro. like 210, 215. I mean, you know, you, you look at him and he's, he's, you know, there is no worry about the physicality yes. aspect from this game. He's ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, Christian Wood, we're, we're going to, I mean, I spent an hour on Christian well, Wood. And, and, I, and that's I actually, I, want... I, I have a good point there on Christian Wood because I got, I, I actually have a question teed up for you about him okay. because. You know, a lot has been made about about Woods' physique, right? And whether or not he's truly, you know, is he a four? Is he a five? So, you know, from you, I, I kind of want to pick your brain. You know, big to big, as as an opinionated seven footer, uh, I, I figured out a way to squeeze that in there. Um, you know, what do you think is the most important thing for a guy like Wood to focus on when he is going up against, you know, sometimes some you know bigger, more physical competition, you know, which, which he has to face occasionally, you know, you're looking at the, the Jokic's, the Embiid's of the NBA, where there are some bigger bodied guys that he has to square off against that have the size advantage against him, especially if he's lined up with them five, you know, five to five. Yeah. Um, well, I had to line up with Shaq a few times. It wasn't prime Shaq and I had to guard Yao also. So yeah, that, that was kind of my expertise. He's got to be positioning. You know, you got to win the foot battle. Um, I haven't seen Christian in the time that I've seen uh seen him take one charge you know with those bigger guys you beat them to the spot you get your feet set and you take a charge you don't want to be fighting or wrestling with people and uh you know he's got to realize how athletic he is you know there's a couple moments where he can slide over go vertical and take it in the chest and he's going to be blocking shots um he's an intriguing prospect you know josh christopher Christian Wood, they fall under the 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 title that I would like to say. Remember this, Jackson. They're basketball players. I don't know if he's a center. I don't know if he's a forward. I don't know if Josh Christopher is a point guard or a, a small ball four or or a three. They're just basketball players, you know. So that's what intrigues me. And I think just like I said, positioning on defense is going to be the biggest growth. Uh, he's got to get out of his own head on free throws. He's too darn talented to miss free throws. We know how good he is, and that'll go away. There's just probably some frustrations and excitement when, you know, once he gets on the line, but I don't know how he signed here. And for so cheap, he's that good. It's like, whoa. And as the pieces continue to build around him and this group and Jalen and Scoot, and LP, like all those guys and Josh, like pff, the future's bright, but he's exciting. But positioning, I don't care. I'm not trying to put, 30 pounds on him. You know what I'm saying? Positioning mm -hmm. will be everything. And he just got to fight and know how to stay out of foul trouble. What are you most looking forward to coming up in this, in this upcoming rocket season? I know we hit some points on Jalen green, Christian wood, but what are you most excited about for this season? I want to see the growth. I want to see the guys go and understand time and pace and their scouting report and make those little adjustments that we're seeing the mistakes now early in the season and maybe once the season starts and to see like, oh, he figured out how to rotate on the weak side. Oh, he's realizing this is a shooter. Oh, he's realizing, Scoot just realized, oh, that's the hot man. Let me get Jalen the ball three, four, five more times. You know, like Amani Brooks hit two or three threes in a row, right, yeah, the other day. And it's like, now nah, run a play and get him a look. Or Amani, you come and set the screen get the guy look because your man ain't gonna help you just hit three threes in a row so i think the growth the veteran nuances is what excites me uh to build and jackson i'm gonna tell you right now we have a team built i'm not gonna get too excited and say championship i'm not gonna throw that out i'm not gonna throw that out but i'll just say for success in the nba the pieces are there you have two guys who can play at a superstar level, which means I'm scoring 30, 30 plus points, 10 assists, couple steals that can fill it up at a, at a superstar, if not all-star level. And then you have really, really good role players around them. You have a house, you have a tights, you have an LP, like you have an Air Gordon, you have those guys. And once you have the superstar, everything else falls in. But we have the role players, okay? Um, the guys are there and I mean, Jay Sean Tate, like we didn't even say his name yet. Like he does everything. Like he, he doesn't complain. Like he, like he starts, he comes, like he, he does everything. He's physical. He can play guys like, like he's improving his shot. If he's not shooting well, he's going to impact the game in multiple ways, but that's the experience he had playing overseas and being a grown man really early, you know, and he doesn't take any moment on the floor for granted. So 
the pieces are there. Scoot and Jalen keep maturing and growing into what they are. And I remember I said this too, Jackson. We're going to go similar to that Milwaukee game who ends up being world champs at the end of the day and beat a number of those teams. We're going to beat a Lakers team on on a night. We're going to beat the Nets. We're going to beat some of these guys with their guys on the other end because our guys can go off for these major performances and the role players all fit their way in. So that's what excites me about this season. We're going to have some of those games. You're going to be like, whoa. like We're going to have some fun this season. Yeah, we beat them. Yes. And then the highlights, KJ Martin's going to dunk on somebody's head. <laughs> hey, it, Ryan, I got to say, it's a good it's a good thing you're not still playing because you you meet the criteria, you meet the cutoff for the KJ Martin poster blocks because you got to be seven uh, feet tall to ride that ride. Oh, and he has blocked every seven footer from here till, you know, all the way up, all the way up to Toronto. So it's a good thing you're not still in the NBA because he, you would well, be on his hit list. Well, his father has darn near knocked me out in a few games and probably had me concussed a few times. <laughs> so I'd rather get my shot blocked than a Kenyan clothesline, which I <laughs> was the recipient of. Hey, oh, and Jackson, those weren't flagrant fouls either. It was like, oh, yeah, play on. All right. Those were play on fouls. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah back, in the, cool. back in the good old days. <laughs> Take a free um, throw. <laughs> I, Ryan, I got one more question for you before we get you out of here. I just, you know, I want to get your impressions on head coach Steven Silas. You know, you've played for a lot of teams in the NBA. You've played for a lot of different head coaches. What are just, what's your read on him so far? You know, he's had one year under his belt. Obviously, it was a really, you know, tough shake of a season with everything going on with the COVID protocols and everything. And then just the number of injuries, you know, 30 different guys suiting up for the Houston Rockets. It was a crazy season from hell. But, but you know, I think the one thing that Rockets fans can point towards and that, you know, we can take solace in is every player, and, and even Steven Silas has said this, every player that played for the team last year got better. They developed, they they got better. And Silas has, has had a hand in developing some of the most generational talents over the last 15, 20 years in the league. He was there with yes. LeBron early on. He was there with Steph early on. He was there with Luka. So what are your early impressions from him? He's just what the doctor ordered. He is. Um, coach Silas, he's not a yeller. He's not your old school throwback coach. He's an intellect. He's going to get to know you. He's going to talk to you. He's going to be honest with you. He knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. Um, I've been privileged to, you know, I never worked with Coach Silas, uh, but I thought I'd have a chance to play for his dad in Charlotte. And we always kind of kept in touch behind the scenes. And he's a better person than he is a coach or former player or anything else. That speaks volumes. As As a player, like, you know, like, this guy isn't fake. Like, this is a real guy. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm with them, and I think it's just a new era of NBA where these kids need that. You know, we talk about, like, ask Scoot how he feels about him. Ask, you know, Daniel Tice how he feels him walking over him before a huddle or a game and asking him what he thinks. Or asking Eric Gordon as a veteran who's put in work here in the organization and saying, you want to start? You want to come off the bench? You want to travel? What do you What do you want to do? Hey, John, come into practice, mentor our young guys. Even, even if we're looking for options elsewhere, like, that worked because of Steven Silas. So he, I, I can't say enough about him, you know, and this is the team for him. You know, maybe coaching James Harden maybe would have worked out. Maybe it wouldn't have. But I know for this group right here, he's it, man. He's it. And for the style of player and guys that we need now, he's it. And just going to dinner and talking to these guys and being one-on-one with them, it, it, it speaks volumes. And he's people, like you said, they take for granted. They don't know he's – He's been around this game for a very, very long time, man. But he's an NBA lifer. You know, he's Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> and that doesn't always work out. There's there's few that I mean it worked like JV Bickerstaff, who I got coached by, is is amazing and he did a great job here. And he's one of those, you know, cool guys that can relate. You know, Steven Silas is can you know can relate. You know, there's a few of them that have just like dove in and just they understand the culture and these young guys, man, but He's like so cool. Like it's it, it just rare that you see. I don't want to say like. I don't want to say ego. I don't want to say confidence. I don't want to say lack of like. There's this just weird presence about an NBA coach normally that you gotta know. And then there's this selfless, down to earth, everyday guy approach that you see from Coach Silas. Another coach that I saw that in, off the court, that reminds me of Coach Silas is Greg Popovich. I was in. Memphis one day during the last stop of my career, a 10-day contract, and I'm in and out of hotels. And I'm like, 
you know, you're kind of scrummaging to find food. I'm trying different restaurants. I'm trying to keep myself, you know, occupied outside of practice. And I'm out, you know, just in the kind of the middle of nowhere. I find this like little French shop and I'm sitting there. There's like this old man walking down the street. I'm like, you know, who is that? I'm like, I'm looking over like, dude, that looks like pop. Like, is that pop? <laughs> and I look over like, and it's like pop just walking down the street by himself. No security, no nothing, no nobody there. Just like an average everyday guy, like, hey, Ryan, how you doing? You good? And we sat and talked, you know, for about 10 or 15 minutes and he went about his business. And I'm like, dude, this is one of the greatest coaches that ever played the game. I bring that up. Steven Silas has that type of effect. Like, don't be surprised if you just see Steven Silas in your coffee shop like anybody else <laughs> grabbing some Starbucks and having a conversation with you. He's got that type of appeal and everyday effect that he's not like, oh, I'm the head coach of this. You got to know who I am. Like, he gets it, man. And those guys are rallying behind him and, and want to play for him. And, you know, as a, as a former player, as a former pro, all you want is communication and respect. And he gives that to the guys. And I am ecstatic to have a chance to work with uh, Coach Silas. Ryan, this conversation has been phenomenal. I know that the listeners have loved every minute of this. It has been a pleasure to have you on the show. What's the, is there anything you want to say to the diehard Rockets fans listening to this podcast right now? Well, for one, we'll be honest here. I'm always a straight shooter, as you guys know. Um, all I ask is an opportunity for you all um, to gain your trust. And please don't judge me from uh, first take or ESPN or this or that. Get to know me first and allow my work ethic, allow me to work hard and earn your trust. If you're going to allow me to earn your trust, I appreciate it. And that's re really all I can ask. And I'm, I can't tell you how thankful I am for this opportunity. But, you know, we got a fun group. It's going to be an amazing season. But, you know, I, I thank you all um, for giving me a chance. And even you too, Jackson, you know, you and, and you know, it's funny. I don't. I think you should feel the way that some people feel like, well, who is this guy? Is this the right hire? Did this work? We were expecting this guy, that guy. Who is this guy? Him? Uh, how's it going to work out? But let me earn that trust. And I, I value that and I appreciate that. And I cherish that opportunity. And let's have a blast this season. But I'm going to tell you, man, I'm going to work my tail off to earn it. I'm going to work my tail off to earn it. But um, it, it's been a blessing. in Houston, you guys have been good, good to me. And Jackson, you and a number of other people, from the production team and Craig and everybody, you know, like it's weird. Like I've been here a couple of days already. I haven't been moved into this apartment and people are, what can we do for you? What do you need, man? You need some help. What do you need? You know, I got you with anything. So I appreciate that Jackson. And from all you guys, it goes a long way. And, and if you're listening right now, make sure you get your phones or whatever, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button. I'm subscribed. So every time Jackson does a pod, I'm getting, I'm getting my subscribe button. Okay. I'm getting my notifications. Okay. Locked on rockets is popping through my thing. Okay. So, Make sure you guys do that, but I appreciate you um, for having me on and, and just for the whole experience. Hey, Ryan, I appreciate you for taking the time. H-Town is, is lucky to have you. We're looking forward to you becoming another transplant, a part of this great city. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, thanks again for taking the time to join the show. Appreciate you, brother. And anytime you need me, you know I'm going to call away, man. Absolutely. All right, that is going to do it for today's show. Hopefully you enjoyed our time with Ryan Hollins, the newest member of your Houston Rockets broadcasting team. That's going to do it for today's show. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the brand new YouTube channel. Subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, be it Apple, Spotify, Google, brand new Odyssey app. Make it your first listen of the day. Go make Locked on Bets your second listen. They've been killing it over there at Locked on Bets. Go check out their show, make a little bit of money. But for today's episode, that's going to do it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets. Your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.